Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Covering both sides of the big issues with the analysis you trust on News Radio 1040 WHO. FDA has now given full approval to Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. I call it the Hawkeye vaccine because it was tested at the University of Iowa. And now we are starting to see more vaccine mandates, including those among employers. Let's bring on legal expert Quentin Brogdon to talk this over, this latest development. Quentin, thanks for returning to Iowa Radio. Good morning to you. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks for having me back. I wanted to talk to you, Quentin, because before this happened, and and you and I had talked in the past about employers mandating COVID-19 vaccines, a lot of listeners would then text me and say, but what if something goes wrong because you're vaccinated? Since it's emergency use authorized, isn't the employer liable? Does this FDA full approval put employers on a a more solid legal ground, in your opinion, in mandating vaccines? Absolutely, Jeff. This FDA approval, which is now uh, not contingent in any way, the the previous approval was emergency use authorization, so-called EUA approval. But now the Pfizer vaccine, at least, has been fully and unconditionally approved. So it will make it harder for anybody to argue in a legal setting that essentially employees or others are being experimented with, if you will. Now we have a fully approved vaccine and we're going to see, we've already started to see many more mandates in the wake of this for vaccination of employees. So Quentin, let me go big picture with you on this. Um, A lot of people will argue, I can't believe that we're legally going to allow employers to force me to put something in my body that I I don't want to. Is this a case where basically at will law trumps everything where basically, you know, you have the job, the employer dictates what you do to continue to have the job, and that's how the courts will see it? What are you thinking here? Largely, uh, you're correct, Jeff. It depends. That could be modified if somebody, for instance, had a contract of employment that limited what the employer could require, or if somebody, for example, were a member of a union and the union had negotiated things that could and could not be required. But absent that, employers have quite a bit of power, the consensus is, but it's not unlimited power. You know, the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the federal agency, has said that employers should accommodate the employees' sincerely held religious beliefs under a law called Title VII and disabilities under the Americans with Disabilities Act that might make an employee more susceptible to a bad reaction from a vaccination. That's also what I was thinking, Quentin, is that it seems like in previous court rulings you and I have discussed that you have to have some options for your employees. You just simply cannot say, um, you know, that that you have to get vaccinated. We also had that really interesting lawsuit by the professor who said, look, I've already had covid. You you can't require me to get vaccinated after I have COVID, I can prove I have antibodies. Is that also a factor in how employees might be able to challenge being mandated to be vaccinated? Well, anybody can mount a challenge. They just um, hire an attorney and and they go down to the courthouse. The question is, what are the chances of that challenge yeah. succeeding? Right. And, and generally, generally, it's going to be a tough road to hoe for any employee in any situation now, unless they have some kind of sincerely held religious belief that they can show or disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act, or they're a member of a union, or they have a written contract of employment that prohibits it, okay. you know, absent those things, it's going to be hard for an employee to contest uh, a vaccine mandate. You know, And of course, you've got state laws. There may be state laws that come into play, depending on the state in which the employee lives. Quentin, I'm getting texts in on the American Topper and Accessories text line, 515-989-1040. And I do think that the listeners you know, who, who really don't want to get vaccinated, a lot of them are talking about liability issues here. And so a texter is saying, but what if I do develop some side effects after I get a vaccine? Is my employer liable because... Uh, the employer made me get the vaccine, or is this FDA approval, again, put the employer on some solid ground here? 
Well, again, you look at a state-by-state analysis. You look at whether workers' compensation applies here and whether this could be a work-related injury. It's not necessarily true that the the employer is automatically responsible. The answer would depend upon, for instance, workers' compensation and some other issues. And any employee who's going to be making that type of claim is going to have to show causation, namely that it was the vaccine that caused the bad side effect as opposed to contracting COVID, for example, by going into a grocery store. And it won't necessarily be, and in fact it won't be, the easiest causation showing for anybody down at the courthouse to show a connection between a specific exposure and specific injuries. Attorney Quentin Brogdon, he's been a real go-to on the issues here and answering the questions being posed by the listeners. Quentin, thanks for joining me today on this important issue, and I'm sure we will talk again in the future.